Hey folks, welcome to this lesson on Lewis dot structure. Now, we do have two types of Lewis structures. We have ionic structures and covalent structures. We did uh, briefly cover the ionic structures when we were talking about ionic bonds. And in this case, they, they use arrows to show the movement of electrons. And this obviously occurs from a metal to a non-metal. They form these cations, which have an attraction between one another. So remember this, and there's going to be an attraction between these, three, these two. Um, covalent structures, they actually use stick bonds to show the sharing of electrons. Now, we have uh, three types of stick bonds, one, two, and three, and these represent a certain amount of electrons that are being shared. One stick bond means that uh, the atoms are sharing one pair of electrons. So, for example, if we had the atoms X and X, they'd be sharing one pair of electrons. Now, as we go down, as we have more sticks, this the second one uh, is a double bond right over here. So these ones will actually share two pairs of electrons. So every stick is a pair of electrons. And finally, the third one, a triple bond, if you guessed it, they will be sharing three pairs of electrons. Okay? So those are, those are used to represent how many electrons are being shared between the atoms. Um, and overall, if you have a polyatomic ion with a charge, there also, this, this diagram also shows the uh, distribution of electrons in that molecule. Um, so to draw the Lewis structures, we first start out by drawing the Lewis dot structures, and then we use arrows to show those movement of electrons. Remember that if we have uh, if we have a nominal that doesn't have its full valence shell filled, we're going to need more uh, metals to give away electrons. On the other hand, if we have metals that are still uh, wanting to give away electrons, we'll need more non-metals uh, to pick those up. If you end up with the cations and the anions, which you will in the ionic bond, you're going to need to put them in square brackets and put a charge on the top right-hand corner. So here's an example. Um, this example on a test might be something like um, show the interaction between potassium and oxygen. You won't necessarily know how many uh, uh, um, atoms of each you'll be needing, so it's important to draw the loose structure correctly. Now this one uh, that is drawn over here uh, is, is a little bit incorrect. You should have two unpaired electrons. So you should have a pair here up here, here, one of these electrons should be unpaired, and the other one should be here, again, unpaired. So it will need two valence electrons to satisfy its octet, one of which it will get from this potassium atom, the other which it will get from this potassium atom. So what we've seen here is that we had one oxygen atom, and we needed two potassium atoms. Each potassium atom lost one valence electron, so it gets a charge of plus one. Again, plus one here. Oxygen now has eight, it picked up two, so we have this nice Lewis structure. And the second one here is an interesting example because here we have fluorine, again, seven valence electrons because it's in group number seven. Uh, and this one, again, group number seven, seven valence electrons. So each of these are going to need one electron each. Now calcium has two to give away, so it gives one over here, and it gives one over here. Now that satisfies the octet for fluorine, satisfies this octet for fluorine, and again, calcium has gone down a, le a level, there will be an actual octet on the uh, calcium, but again, because it's lost, we can just leave it at this. The only mistake in this case is looking at the charges. So remember, fluorine has gained one electron, so it will be a negative. This one has gained one electron, but calcium has lost two. So this charge should be, in fact, two plus. Now, covalent structure is a little bit more challenging uh, because we're trying to make an, uh, an actual molecule. So the first step is we want to count the total number of valence electrons for each atom in a molecule and add those together. So in this case, let's say, for example, we had N and O. Well, N is in group number 5, so it will have 5 valence electrons. Oxygen is in group number 6, so it'll have 6 valence electrons. If we add those together, we will get 11. So that is our total amount of valence electrons for this molecule. Now, let's say, for example, this molecule had a plus, uh, a plus charge, so NO plus. Well, nitrogen still has five, oxygen still has six, but we've lost one electron because we got this positive charge. So we're going to have to minus one electron, and we would get ten. If this molecule had a negative charge, for example, nitrogen again would still have five, oxygen would still have six, we'd add those together. But because it has gained an electron, in this case because we're, we're negative, because it has gained an electron, it's also going to be gaining an electron in the mathematical sense. So in this case, we would have 12 electrons. Okay, so that's what it means when it has, if it's a cation, we need to subtract the electrons equivalent to its charge because it was only plus one. We subtracted uh, a one electron. An ion has a negative charge, so we're going to add a uh, electron based on the magnitude of its charge. Number two 
uh, figure out how many octet atoms there are. Well, again, if we go to nitrogen and oxygen, both of these require eight valence electrons to s satisfy their octet. Remember, there are some excep exceptions, such as hydrogen, which only needs two. So if we had a molecule that had only nitrogen and oxygen, how many electrons would there need to be for a full outer shell? Uh, well, there would have to be 16. Okay? So we know that nitrogen needs 8, oxygen needs 8. Um, so that's two, two atoms that both need 8. We multiply by 8, and we got 16. Uh, number three, we find the number of bonding electrons. So how many electrons are actually involved in bonding? And then because, remember that every, uh, every one of those bonds, these sticks, uh, represents a pair of electrons, what we are going to do is we're going to take this number of bonding electrons here and divide it by two. So if we had one pair, uh, two of them, we divide it by two, we only need one stick in our drawing. Uh, number five is we need to draw the arrangement of an atom, uh, of, of the atoms in this molecule. And what we usually do is we put the atoms that can form the most amount of bonds in the center of the, of the molecule. So that means things like carbon. Carbon can uh, do four, and that's usually found, if it's in existence in that molecule, it's usually going to be found in the center. Uh, things like hydrogen are, are, are never really found in the center because they can only form one bond. So they can't be that center atom that everything kind of uh, branches off of. Finally, in terms of electrons, we want to deduce the number of lone pairs. Um, so what we do is we take the number of valence electrons minus the bonding electrons. That's basically number one minus number three. And these will give you the number of uh, lone electrons. Okay? So once you do that, uh, you can put those electrons around the atom. If you want to find out num number lone pairs, we could just divide by two. Um, but uh, that will give you the number of lone electrons. And then again, just like we've always done, if it's an ion, put it in square brackets and put the final charge. So let's do an example here and let's go walk uh, step by step. So our first step was to count the number of uh, valence electrons in the molecule. So in this case, uh, our molecule is CO2, it has carbon and oxygen. So carbon, uh, because it's in group four, has four valence electrons. There's only one of them in that molecule, so we have four. Oxygen, it's in group number six, it requires six valence electrons. There's two atoms in this molecule that we're dealing with, so we have 12. So all in all, we have 16 valence electrons. Step number two is to try to figure out how many octet atoms there are, so we can figure out how many octet electrons there are. So carbon requires eight, there's only one of them, we have eight. Uh, and oxygen also requires eight, and there's two of them, so we have 16. All in all, we have 24 uh, octet electrons. Okay. So to find the number of electrons that are uh, involved in bonding, we take our octet electrons, 24 minus 16, and we get eight electrons that are involved in bonding. So these are our bonding electrons. Okay. Number four, we want to find out those bonding electrons, they come in pairs, so we want to find out how many sticks there are. So we have eight, every pair is one stick, so we have four bonds that we can work with. All right, now it comes to the uh, arrangement of atoms. Now what we could do is, let's well, out of this, the, the two types of atoms that we have, we have carbon and oxygen. Carbon can form the most amount of bonds, it can form four, because that is four unpaired electrons. Oxygen can only form two because it only has two unpaired electrons. So we're going to put carbon in the middle, flanked by oxygen on each side. Now you want to try to keep these flanking atoms as far away from each other as possible. In this case, the maximum is 180 degrees. Now in terms of, we have four bonds to actually work with. How are we going to distribute these bonds between these uh, three atoms? Well, you could put one and one, but that would only use up two. So we have to, we have to do something. We could put one two, three bonds. All right, well, if we put three bonds on this side, what we have to keep in mind is how many bonds each of these atoms can actually create. Carbon can form four, so it's okay with three bonds. But oxygen can only form two. And we have three here? No way, that's not going to work. The maximum that oxygen can form is two bonds. So we're going to put two bonds here. We still have two more bonds left. So you guessed right if we said we're going to put them over here. So that is going to be our arrangement for this molecule. We'll see if it works in a little bit. If it doesn't, we're going to have to uh, uh, tweak it a little bit. Uh, number six, in terms of electrons, we have to find out how many lone electrons we have. So we actually take our value from um, number one, which is 16, 
minus our value for number 3, which is 8, and we get 8 uh, lone electrons. Now, if we divide this by 2, we can get 4 lone pairs. So either way is fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what we need to do with these lone pairs is make sure that each of these, at these atoms have a full octet. Let's first look at carbon over here. Well, look at it. It's actually sharing 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons. So carbon is actually good. It has 8 uh, outer electrons or 8 valence electrons um, from sharing them with oxygen. But if we look at this oxygen atom, it only has 2, 4. Remember that each stick is a pair of electrons. So oxygen will need four more electrons, so we're going to give it four more electrons. We have one pair, and we have two pairs. So now oxygen has two, four, six, eight. We're going to do the same thing with this oxygen because it's in the same circumstance. So we have one, two, three, four. So now if we look at this, every single atom has eight electrons. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. And this oxygen has... Two, four, six, eight. We're all done. Uh, this example is, is a little bit more interesting because it has a charge. Uh, this is, if you remember, this is a nitrate ion. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll do this step by step just as well. So number one, we need to figure out, let me undo that, it's a little bit too big. So for number one, what we want to do is try to find out the number of valence electrons. In this case, we only have nitrogen and oxygen atoms. Uh, nitrogen is in group number five. It has five valence electrons, and there's only one of them in that molecule, so we have five. Oxygen, group six, there's three of them, and we have 18 valence electrons. However, we also have one special thing, this negative charge. This negative charge we also have to account for. There's my little negative charge. And that means I also have one electron here. So I'm going to add one to this final count. Now, all in all, 5 plus 18 plus 1 gives me 24 valence electrons. Now, just a note about this one. This molecule has an overall negative charge, but we don't really know at this point where that negative charge is, where that negative electron is. So we're just adding it to our tally so we can use it uh, as we go along. Number two is figure out how many valence electrons are there. Well, nitrogen needs eight. There's only one of them, so we have eight. Oxygen also needs eight valence electrons, but there's three of them, so we have... Um, oops, let me just erase this here. We have 24. So added together, we have 32 octet electrons. Now, to find out how many we are involved in bonding, we take step number three. We take uh, 32 minus 24, and we get 8. So 8 electrons are involved in bonding. To figure out how many sticks that require, that equals, uh, with step number 4, we take 8 divided by 2, and we get 4 bonds. Okay, so 4 sticks. Now, it comes to arranging the, electron, uh, the atoms. Now, we have to look at these ones, which ones can form the most amount of bonds. Nitrogen has uh, five valence electrons, which means it has three unpaired electrons. That means it can form three bonds. Oxygen only has two unpaired electrons. It can only form two bonds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put nitrogen in the center flanked by oxygens. Now again, we want to try to separate the oxygens as far as possible. So three things. Uh, it's going to have to create some kind of circle. Uh, a circle split three ways. Okay, is going to look something like this. So we're going to put an oxygen over here, we're going to put an oxygen over here, and we're going to put an oxygen over here. Okay, so we have three oxygens, uh, and we have four bonds. So what that means, right away, we know that this nitrogen atom has to be connected to each one of these atoms. So automatically, we know that we're going to have to use three bonds. We have one left, which means that we have to create a double bond somewhere. Now, in this one, it's actually interesting. It doesn't really matter which oxygen you choose because they're all the same. So I'm just going to put a double bond at the top here. We've used four uh, of our bonds, and that's all we had there. Now, we need to figure out how many lone pairs we have, uh, or lone electrons. So again, step number six is going to take the value from number one, which is 24, minus the value from number three, which is eight, and we're going to have 16 lone electrons. If we divide that by 2, we'll have 8 lone pairs. Okay. 
So eight lone pairs. We have to make sure that each atom has a full octet. Well, if we look at nitrogen, nitrogen's already set. It has two, four, six, eight electrons. Perfect. It's, it's good. We don't need any lone pairs here. Let's look at this oxygen here. How many does it have? Well, it's sharing two and four. So it actually does need uh, four more electrons to be stable. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. There's our, our two lone pairs. Now, going back to our tally here, we just used two. We have six lone pairs remaining. Uh, this oxygen only has two electrons here, so we're going to have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six. So how many electrons alone pairs have we used? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So we've used sixteen electrons. And in terms of pairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight lone pairs. Let's just double check, make sure everything has a full octet. This oxygen here has two, four, six, eight. Good. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Good. This nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Good. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Good. The only thing that we're missing is because it's a polyatomic ion, it has a charge. So we're going to put brackets and our negative. So here's a practice question uh, for carbon H and three fluorines. Okay. So we need to try to figure out what the structure is there. So please pause the video and work on this by yourself. Again, go through the steps step by step and come up with a molecule that you have. Once you're satisfied, unpause the video and we'll have the answer for you uh, when you get back. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, folks, here are the answers for this, uh, this molecule. So we have CHF3. So we have 26 valence electrons. And to calculate how many octets, again, carbon needs eight. Uh, fluorine also needs eight, but hydrogen only needs two. So we added those together, we got 34 octet electrons. We had eight bonding electrons by taking 34 minus 26, and we divide that by two to get four sticks, or four bonds. Uh, so in this case, again, carbon was the one that has the most amount of bonds. It can form four. Fluorine and hydrogen all, all can only own, uh, create one, so those are going to be on the outside. We want to separate them as far as possible, uh, so this is going to be 90 degrees from one another uh, in terms of our Lewis structure. Uh, we had to connect them, so there is our four bonds to use. And we figured out that we had nine lone pairs. Hydrogen's good with only two. It already has that two. So each of these will have three lone pairs around them. That gives us two, four, six, eight. Good. Two, four, six, eight. Good. Two, four, six, eight. Good. And carbon has two, four, six, eight. Good. Hydrogen, two. It's good. There's our structure. So why do we care about the shape or the loose structure? This shape allows us to figure out how well it will pack with adjacent molecules. If we know how well it's going to, um, what the structure is, we can also figure out what the polarity of the molecule is. Once we know what the polarity of the molecule is, we can figure out what kind of um, bonds between these molecules will happen. And we call these kind of, ha and not hashtag, but uh, quote bonds, we call these intramolecular forces. They are the forces between these individual molecules that are made up of atoms. Okay? And they also, what they do, is they dictate the physical and chemical properties of these molecular substances. So thanks very much for watching. In class, we'll be doing a whole bunch of examples. So let's get ready to learn. Take care. See you soon.